CC manual. Research your topic. His speech will be five to seven minutes plus an additional two to three minutes for questions. The title of his speech is going to is, is called Planning for Retirement. How long is it? Five to seven minutes? Five to seven plus two to three minutes for questions. Okay. Thank you. In my CPA firm, I come across a number of people who are living in retirement strictly on Social Security. That's how they live. And when I see them, I really kind of feel sorry for them. Because if you're living on Social Security, you're not going to have a really enjoyable retirement. Social Security was never intended to be a retirement system. The purpose of Social Security and Medicare is to make sure your rent gets paid and you have money for food and your health expenses through Medicare. But if, if that's all you have, Social Security and Medicare, you kind of got to have maybe a kind of a sad retirement. So if you want to really enjoy your retirement, you're going to need to have another retirement plan. Now, if you have a good retirement plan through your employer, well, that's good. Some people do, but most people don't. And if you don't, then you need to have an individual retirement account. And I bet not many people know that there are actually eight different types of IRAs, individual retirement accounts. And that's why I created this chart that I want to go over with you. And you'll notice at the top it says, note, the information presented below is very basic and abbreviated. A full page could be written on each type of IRA. So before you make a final decision as to what type of IRA you want to have, you really should discuss it with your tax return preparer, mostly. And if you prepare your own taxes, then you have a lot of research to do. What I want to do now is go over the different types of IRAs and some of the particulars about them. And the first column is the deductible IRA. That's also known as the traditional IRA. The second column is a non-deductible IRA, and that is the worst of all of them. But because of the way the tax laws are for some people, that's the only one they can have. Next is the Roth IRA, which a lot of people like. The money is not deductible as you put it into your plan, but then it's not taxable as you take it out. The next column is the Education IRA, which it used to be called, now it's called the, the Education Savings Account. It's where you put money into an account in a child's name, and that money is used for their college education. The next is a Rollover IRA. That's where you have money in a 401k or some other kind of pension plan, when you leave your employer, you take that, those funds and roll them over into an IRA. And then the SEP IRA and the SIPL IRA are good plans, but you, to use those, you have to have your own business or be an employee of a company who has a SEP or a SIPL IRA. And the last one is an HSA, which is a health savings account. And a health savings account you put money into it each year, and then you can, at any time, you can use that money to pay your medical expenses. Technically, it's not an IRA, but if you reach age 65 and you still have money in there that you don't need for medical expenses, then you can draw that money out and it'll be treated just like a regular IRA account. The HSA is an excellent, one of the best tax benefits there are. Now, I'm going to go over some of the rows here. The first row, maximum contribution. That's how much money the IRS regulations allows you to put in to an IRA plan. Row two, maximum deduction. That's how much of the money you're allowed to put in can you deduct on your tax return. Row three, the phase-out deduction for higher income taxpayers. Your, the amount that you can deduct from your IRA 
can be limited depending on your income of uh, you and or your spouse just for certain ones and then the next row funding deadline that's how long you have to put the money into the account each year and then the early withdrawal penalty on the next row for most the early withdrawal penalty is 10% for the IRS and 2.5% for state. And that's when you take the money out before you're 59 and a half. After that, you take it out penalty free, but if you take an early withdrawal, you pay the penalty in addition to the tax on the money that you draw out. The next row is the age at which you are required to draw money out of your IRA. Some people who have plenty of money when they retire they don't want to draw money out of their IRA because they have to pay tax on it. IRS doesn't like that. So they set a certain age where you're required to draw money out whether you want to or not, or you get penalized for it. The next row is the age at which you can no longer contribute to a certain type of IRA. And then the next row is, that says contributions stop, the next row is withdrawal taxable. That row shows you for each different type of IRA how draws from that IRA is taxed. And then the second to the last row that says roll over, that shows you which type of IRA can be rolled over to a different type of IRA. And the last row is coordination. That means that for certain types of IRA you cannot also have another type of IRA. And you can, have, you can have two or three types of IRAs, but the amount that you contribute to them, the maximum per year, has to be distributed through those different IRAs if you have more than one. And I also have some notes down here about certain particulars, about certain ones. And I give a, a much more full description of the health savings account here. And... On the last line, I also mention how much the 401k contribution is that you can put into the plan each year. See how simple all that is? <laughs> Everybody got it? Nobody has any questions? Now, this chart is on my website at www.dixonent.com slash ira.pdf. So being that it's so complicated, I thought some of you might have a question tonight. Yeah. So I have now, my, my speech is ended for this part, and I have two or three minutes to allow for questions. Yes, Kathy? Okay, on the third row down, it says phase out deduction begins at AGI. What's AGI? Adjusted gross income. Oh, okay. Adjusted gross income is the bottom number on page one of the 1040. <clears throat> So yes. what if you're over 55 and you're living on your Social Security, How, where would you even go to start something like this and you have to have $5,000? Well, the five, the $5,500 contribution limit, you don't have to put that much in. You can put in any amount you want up to that amount. You can put in $1 a year or you can put in $5,500 a year, whatever amount you want up to that limit. And the higher amounts is if you are over age 50. You're allowed to put in a higher amount. But you have to go to, uh, to somebody like you, a CPA, or you have to go to no. a bank, or where do you go? To set up an IRA account, you do it through either a bank, or directly to a mutual fund, or a brokerage company. You don't need an accountant or tax preparer to set it up the account. You can set it up yourself. You can just go to a bank, a brokerage, or a mutual fund. For you. <laughs> I can help you do it. <laughs> yes, question? So I've been starting to do the calculation of the 70 and a half and 59 and a half and all of this and that. My birthday is September 18th which means half, uh, that April 15th, and how, I'm trying to figure out exactly when 70 and a half is from when I am born. And I know the year, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. So well, how, can when, you, you're, when you're at, at the point where you're age 70 and a half, mm -hmm. it's actually 
the first of the year following, it's the first of the year following the year that you turn 70 and a half. Right, so if, so if you turn 70 and a half in 2015, you don't have to stop drawing out until January 2016. Correct. Okay. Yes, but I want to know exactly when it is that. Okay, never mind. <laughs> okay. Yes. I've always wondered how much do how much do people that don't really have that traditional 401k anymore at their company how much are, are they losing by not having that employer contribution? I mean, you know. Well, the nice thing about an employer-sponsored retirement plan is that you put in money and an employer matches the money you put in up to certain limits. So if you don't put any money in, the employer doesn't have to match anything because there's nothing to match. So for them to put in matching funds, you have to put something in yourself. Okay? I guess that's all the questions. So thank you very much, and I hope you have learned something that you can use tonight.